Hi guys, I'm Michael Cosmos. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be sharing about the biggest change in the UK property market in a generation. It is the new planning laws that have been introduced by the government coming into effect as of the 1st of August 2021. And if you want to know more about how you can maximize and take hold of the opportunities that will come along with these changes, watch this video, like, subscribe, uh, and keep watching. Okay, so today I've got my nephew Nathan, uh, he is a budding entrepreneur and aspiring property developer and I know planning can be complicated but I'm going to try to explain it to him and if he can get it and actually find the opportunities that are coming with this new planning change, hopefully you can get it too. So check it out as we go around the town try to identify deals that are being presented by the new changes. The way that we live and work has evolved over the past decade, and this has been expedited by the pandemic, and you can now see around you shops that are not used, office buildings that are not fully occupied. This has accelerated the need for a change uh, within how we use our buildings. But in the way of that is the archaic planning permission process that stops the developers being able to take buildings like the ones you see around me and repurpose them for other uses because they have to go through what's called a planning permission where you get the authorization from the local authority to make changes to a building. So this presents a lot of risks for a lot of developers to buy properties whereby they might not get these right permissions. Uh, and there's something that's called permitted development that allows our developers to override the permission needed to be given by the council and go by the permission which has been put into law by the government. And this has been available in smaller cases in specific areas. But now, you now have a change in the law that makes it widely available to take a good range of buildings that are being used for a variety of uses and put them into into redevelopment and use them for residential purposes. And the key thing in this whole process is the change in needing to get permission. And I'm going to quickly have a chat with my nephew on this because he understands one or two things about getting permission. And then we can see how, in layman terms, what it means to be able to then go out there as a developer and find these opportunities that you can use permitted development to do your deals and maximize on the opportunities that this new change of law is going to present. Okay, so the key word here is permission. So I'm here with Nathan. Nathan, tell me, you know, because I know you're, you're growing up, but you had to get a lot of permission to do a lot of things. Can you give me some examples of the things you have to get permission for? Uh, when I want to go out to the park with my friends, or uh, now I want to go somewhere outside of Okay, so if you want to go somewhere, you have to get permission. Who do you get permission from? Uh, my parents. Okay, and do they always let you out every time you ask? Not all the time, Okay. mostly. Okay, so mostly, but sometimes they can say no. Okay, so that's the current situation that we have within the planning room, that you have to get permission, but the permission is not guaranteed uh, and from time to time you might get it and you might not get it and that uncertainty makes it not possible for investors to pour in a lot of their money but now as you're growing up and uh, you're going to secondary school in September um, are there some things uh, that have begun to change like do you always have to ask to just go outside every time? Uh, no, okay. uh, asking hasn't been much Okay, because now he has a change in his situation. He doesn't have to ask to go out every time. But are there some conditions you have to... Is there anything you have to be mindful of when you go outside now? Yeah, um, I have to be back before a certain time. Okay, so he has some conditions. He doesn't have to ask every time, but he has conditions that he knows he has to abide to when he goes out. So that is the key change that has been brought in by this planning law. Before you had to get permission to do anything. But now you can go and do what you need to do, but within the conditions and parameters that have been set. And that's a big change. So remember when you were 11, 12, you couldn't go out without permission. 
But then by the time you were 16, you could go out during the day to your friends, but you did not necessarily have to ask permission, but you knew that you had to come back at a certain time uh, and you had to, you know, engage yourself and behave within a certain code of conduct that your parents would expect you to. So that's number one, permission. And then now you are allowed, but within certain conditions. Okay then, so Nathan, if your parents are not around, um, you know, who do you ask permission from? Uh, I ask permission from my uh, big sister. Okay, you live with your big sister and she, so she, you know, you have to ask her, but who sets the rules? My mom sets the rules. Okay, so let's say for an example, yours, you know, uh, your mom is saying you can go outside. Can your sister stop you from going out if your parents have allowed you to go out without any reason? No. Okay, then. so there you go. You have the parents who set the rules and the sister who enforces the rules. So the same thing here. With permitted development, it is the parliament that sets the rule and the council cannot then stop you from doing that you have permission to do from the parliament. And this is the difference between what has happened here in terms of the change in law means that whatever the government says overrides what the council were doing before in terms of having to grant you permission. Within UK town planning, there is something what's called a use classes. This is basically the classification of the uses of different types of buildings. So you have office blocks, residentials, you have care homes, crashes, nurseries, all of these type of buildings fall within certain use classes. So the big change really is that the government has created a new class, which is class MA. Class MA combines a range of classes which were necessarily outside of the scope of permitted development. So now class MA includes things like shops, uh, retail and leisure. Uh, it includes all of these other uh, businesses, including restaurants. All of these are now in class MA, which means that when they are within this class, you now have permitted development rights to take these properties and repurpose them without necessarily having to go through a full planning permission. However, there are things you still have to do before you go ahead with them. You have to go through a process which is called prior approval. Prior approval is the process where you simply submit an outline of your plans to the council, not for a planning permission decision, but you're looking for a determination that what you are doing is within the conditions set out for you to be able to uh, execute and utilize permitted development rights to change a building. Some of these conditions include, uh, does the change impact the environment? What is the noise impact on the new building? As well as pollution and other related factors. So as long as you have already taken into consideration those elements, you can then go ahead and submit uh, this pre-approval application to the local council and they can only reject it on the basis of that the development impacts those conditions but rather than in the past where they had to reject it based on so many other conditions based on their own local plans and their own local preferences okay before you go out there trying to get those deals and look for properties and say you know what this is the time to make the money from these changes a few things you have to consider you have to make sure that you don't convert more than 1,500 square meters, that's one. The building has to have been empty for three months and have to be used for that same use class for over two years. So once you have got that, now it's time to go out there and we're going to try to look for some properties around here that meet that criteria. And I'm going to get Nathan and he's going to help me find some deals that meet this new criteria of permitted development. Okay, so remember Nathan, we don't need permission, we just have to do it within the conditions that are set out. So we have to find buildings that are within the new class. And remember, within the new class, it includes shops, offices, uh, restaurants, leisure centers, but they have to have been empty for three months. And if we find that type of building, we could actually go out there 
and we could try to buy it and then convert it into residential. It has to be what? Residential in terms of a flat or a dwelling and not an HMO. For all of you out there who are ready to go and turn them into HMOs. But remember, it's all those use classes that can be turned into residentials. So we're going to go out, look around the high street, see what we can find, and uh, maybe we might even get some deals today. Do you get it? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so this looks like an, a row of office buildings and yes, let's just have a look down there. Okay, that kind of gives us an idea that this looks like it hasn't been occupied for a little while and yeah, we just have to keep looking and find buildings around the city center and around the area that we think are not being fully utilized. Okay, what, what's this then? I used to play basketball around here. And this place hasn't changed for quite a while. Okay, how many years? Do you know how many, how long it's been like this? Maybe about a year or so. Okay, so there you go. We have found a perfect example of a property that allows us to take advantage of the new uh, permitted development rights that are out there. And Nathan helped me find this building. He plays basketball around here and he has seen this building behind us. The ground floor, it was actually built to be a retail shop, but no one has ever taken up the retail opportunity and it has been boarded up for about a year or so. So this is a perfect opportunity that you can actually convert this place into residential without necessarily going through planning permission as you would have had to do in the past. So these are the type of deals that are out there. Even a young man like Nathan can find them. And I'm sure if you can also look around you, you can find these deals. If you cannot buy them yourself, find someone who will. And I want to get into a deal with you, Nathan. All you have to do is find deals like this, take a picture and send them to me, man. And if we close on one of them, I might give you a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of a fee so that you can have some pocket money and you can start your career as a real estate deal sorcerer. That's what we call them, your deal sorcerer. You find deals, you pass them to me, and then maybe in the future, you can buy your own deals and do it yourself. But uh, that's how you can get started even at a young age. But listen, people, permitted development rights are changing opportunities are out there right across where you live if you just look around you look at buildings that are not used see how you can repurpose those buildings and actually turn them into residential living spaces because you will always find that uh, commercial buildings and other buildings of this nature are cheaper than residential so literally if you can then buy them at a low price convert them into residential there is a plenty of uplift for you to make a profit uh, and make a lot of gains from that okay until next time guys hit that like button and uh, subscribe and comment below if you want Nathan to come back and help me with more property deals let me know in the comments below until next time keep investing take advantage of those permitted development rights and I'll see you next time if you're interested to learn more about property strategies like the one that I've just covered and many others which I cover on this channel, a like and also click on the link in the description and you can be part of my mentorship program where we can work on a one-to-one -one or in small group sessions to talk about property strategies and how you can uh, make your investments in a much more informed way uh, through uh, a process of working together and sharing the knowledge that I have with you. Until next time, you take care.